Oh, hey everybody, how y'all doing? I'm sorry I'm cutting part of my head off, but I'm not here to talk about me. We're here to talk about these blocks here. And what we have here are two 400 small block Chevrolets. The one on the left here is a 400 4 bolt main. I can't remember the year right away. And here is a 200 2 bolt main. Or two. Well, I'm, I goofed that up. <laughs> 200. <laughs> Sorry about that. I should retake this, but I'm not. I'm just going to leave it in. A 400 2 bolt main. Uh, can't quite read it right now, but uh, anyway, dates of these blocks don't really mean anything. But uh, let's see if I can get this here. Ah, uh, let's see. Well, okay. I'm going to kind of eliminate some uh, myths here, too. Um, let's see, get this to where you guys can see. I hear a lot of stories of people saying, oh, this is this, and oh, it's guaranteed to be this. Well, we're going to show you. Okay, here's the front soft plug. Here is the casted area where another soft plug should have been. Then back here is the back one. That used to be a thing that would go by and say, oh, that's a 400 4 bolt main. Not always. And vice versa, here we got the one soft plug, two soft plugs, three soft plugs, and that was always said to be a guaranteed, and it's a 3951 511 block. That was supposed to be a guaranteed four bolt main. And I'll tell you guys, I've had these three soft plug blocks and opened them up and they were two bolts. I have had where this didn't have it had the casting, but it didn't have the this. I've had that be a four bolt. Kind of weird how that works at the factory. But we're going to also point out some differences here, too, before we get into what's going on with these motors. So, Okay. Can you guys, looking at this, see any difference between this deck and this deck right off? I'll give you a couple seconds here. I'll give, you, I'll give you a couple seconds. I'm trying to think. Anyway. Well, uh, let's see. The closest thing I got for a pointer is this. So, now that you guys had a chance to either pause or stop and study these surfaces, what have you all noticed the difference between this 400 block and this 400 block? Other than obvious, this one's decked, this one is not. What have you noticed? And this one's driver side up, this one's passenger side up, so they're just... Okay. On this 400, I wish I could see what year. Let's see if I can get to it. Oh, no, this is one slide. Okay. Anyway, on this 400 here, you've got one, two, three. And I forgot to do it before this was decked. Usually I put deck plugs in here, which helps strengthen the area right here and there and with this head bolt there. So you got one, two, three there. We got the same one, two, three there. We got our steam hole here, steam hole there, steam there, hole there, because these are Siamese cylinders. This cylinder is attached to that cylinder. There's no spacing between them. That's why you got, if you run a 400 block, that's why you got to put the corresponding steam holes in your heads. Otherwise there, there, and there will get super hot and burn your head gasket out in over time. So we got our steam holes there, steam holes there, steam holes there, and steam holes there. Uh, have you figured out the difference yet? This is where the difference come in. See this? Water passage, water passage, water passage. Small, oh that one, okay that is a hit. Oh that is a water passage. That is a small water passage. No water passage. And a small one. See how big these are cast? Those are drilled. Um, factory flaw? Possibly. Was it a design test? Possibly. 
and there's been 350s and I think that's 60 over the same way where it doesn't have the center water passage in it on the 350. Um, why that happened with the, these blocks? The guys that casted these at the time are the only ones that know. Uh, that one's 30 over, this one's 40 over. So, right off the bat, since this has got the smaller hole, smaller hole, this entire area for the 377, from there to there, and this entire center, so this center is really supported now, that is turning out to be a stronger block than this 2-bolt. Because you don't have the cracking possibility right here. Not that it really makes a difference if it cracks from this hole to that hole, it ain't going to go nowhere because it's just that so if you do have a 400 block and you do have a crack from there to there you can still use it because it's not going anywhere unless the crack travel well since that's drilled all the way through it should only just be there but if you do have a crack in there or that then yeah it's junk there's no you can no sleeve in that and having it work right so same here you don't and you, here's your head bolt holes there so with this having a big hole with the two steam holes here, see, we do have steam holes here and steam holes here, but we don't have the big one in there weakening it. All that there is heavier to support the gasket. So, and like I said, this one was casted. I got another 400 block. I got to look, and if I remember, I'll show you. It's a two-bolt main, and it's had this one, this one, but I don't think it had the casting the pair that it was a three bolt or three soft plug so that's that otherwise we've talked about with the other motors I've done here recently and this 400 four bolt I was going to throw in the tank, tank today but I didn't realize none of the timing area has been de-rusted the uh, thrust area for the camshaft wasn't de-rusted. I haven't drilled and or dr haven't tapped these for galley plugs. Uh, and I got yeah, we got some. Gotta get down in here with wire brushes and clean up a little bit of rust that's developed. I haven't checked for casting flash all over the block yet. Um, we haven't ground the oil returns to take that extra casting flash out. And before anybody says it, all that stuff you may think is not worth it. This is my motor, my build. It is stuff I do, and that's what's going to get done. It doesn't hurt a thing. It also it helps get the oil back. We haven't reworked the oil passages here or here yet. Um... So I didn't realize this got away up to the machine shop without having all this other stuff done, but that's okay. We can do it now. And then right in here under the main cap is that hidden galley plug right right in there. I got to make sure that's out. Those are tight. That's what I thought. Because uh, this was decked and honed with torque plates. This one was, wasn't decked, but it was honed with torque plates. Uh, the cylinders have been chamfer, ch 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 chamfered, so the rings go slide into the cylinders good. So, uh, like here on the oil main rear main cap, I rework this oil here as your oil pump comes up, and yeah. So there's a little bit of prep work to be done on this motor, uh, but. Uh, yeah, and the cam center on this one is dang near equal. And what the cam center, what it's going to do, depending on which way it's off, the one side is going to either advance the timing, and the side that's way off, it's going to retard it, or vice versa. I don't, I don't know, but that's what it is. So, and then I see two. Let's see.
Oh, One thing I'm going to do now that I found them, since this has been decked and I may put in head studs, we got to counter uh, all the head bolt holes. Because now these are cut square. Or, or, yeah, countersink them. That's what I countersink all the head bolt holes. So we, uh, what the heck? Uh, get this. If I go to head studs, got to chase the threads, everything. Now it's time to do it. Like I said, these three here will be tapped for screw, uh, screw in plugs. So we got this will re run the tap through so the plugs go in, the three in the back. Um, yeah. So that's going to start on that. The four, this is going to be the 406 over here. This one's the 406. This one's going to be the. Actually, since it is a 30 over, it is another 383. But this is the 383 being built with the 350 crank, 400 block, 57 rods, and uh, spacer bearings to get the bearing mains for the. 350 size. This is a 4155 board now. Yeah, 4. Yeah, I want 4155 board, 30 over. And uh, 383, 350 block is 30 over. So that's a 4.30 over bore with a 3 and a quarter inch stroke. Yeah. This is. A 4155 bore with a three and a half inch stroke. So, yes. Uh, I guess it's now down to, like I said, this area right here and here. Oh, well, look at there. Uh, you guys seeing that? Right there? That's almost blocked off. The, the, there's so much casting flaw right there. That needs to be opened up so the oil can return to the bottom end instead of sit riding up here on the lifters. Yes, you got your drain back holes here, but uh, that all needs to be cleaned up and reworked. So I didn't realize this didn't have all that, which is okay. We'll do it now. And that way we can do, do all this work, all this prep work. It'll go into the hot tank and then it'll be ready for final wash. Wipe down, blow down, blow dry, get it out, get it painted, and start assembling this thing so it doesn't flash. Uh, the lifter valley and the bores will be sprayed with WD-40 before it comes out of there. And then we'll get the outside of the block nice and clean and painted and start assembly. This one here should be able to go together without any issues like that. Uh, 383 with the 350 block because uh, basically I'm turning this three this 400 into a 350 big bore block so the cam clearance issues I ran into on that motor I should not have any with this 377 383 here and uh, it should go together a lot easier than that other one so all right I'll be back Okay, I know inquiring minds will want to know what year this block is. I just looked it up. It is September 20th of 1971 when it is when it was casted. So it's actually a 72 build motor. This is this motor just became special to me. This one probably not going to go anywhere because it is basically my wife's yeah anyway so ah uh, yeah it's really close to being her date so, um okay well, let's see what you guys can see can't see much okay there you go now you see much what I am about to do is I want to tap out these holes here and some guys will say take and drill these out to a bigger passage I, I've got some drill bits that are made to drill this out and drill this out uh, I 
I don't know if this was going to be a, a on this build. You do that on for some certain builds, and this is going to be one of those builds that may or may not been worth doing. So as of right now, it's not going to get done. But now, for you guys that know, your oil passage on the stock block here comes from here. When your motor's up right side up like this, the oil comes through the middle one from front to back, and that's where all the oil basically gets forced down around the cam bearings, then down to the main bearings, and then lubricates the mains. This is where the issue, well, not really an issue, the controversy over clocking your cam bearings comes into play. Uh, and actually, I got one I can grab to show you what I am talking about. Uh, actually. Okay, I'll grab the first and second one out of a block that we took. Here, I know people are visual. A lot of people are visual, so we're going to go visual right now and get this. Let's straighten out here. Okay. When I talk about clock and cam bearings, that's when the block is upside down. If you drive your cam bearings in this way, then you would be clocking them at the uh, left. Okay, let me get this right. <laughs> let me think about that for a second. It's upside down. See, you got two on the front mains, uh, or front cam bearings, you got two holes and so when this is upside down this hole would be at the like the seven o'clock position this one's ending up at the four o'clock uh all right and this one here had some wear on it so when it's upside down the front rear main the front and rear cam bearings when I say I'm clocking them at really uh, <laughs> usually I'm pretty good at getting stuff twisted around in my head uh, clock upside down so yeah, that's yeah Alright. <laughs> yeah, seven o'clock would be over here. So yeah. So yeah, the two front one I end up putting them up. And as you wash here, oil comes down, hits that, goes around. So when it's going by it's pressure feeding the oil holes to loop the cam. That's on the front one. And then everybody's like, oh, I'm taking the easy way out to know I got them lined up. When you got it upside down and the main caps are off, you can see down to this cam hole. And what a lot of people like doing is taking this hole, which when the block is upside down, would be, see, they're different sizes. See, this fits in the front. This is the number two bearing. Uh, okay. Four. Front and rear. Okay. okay, that block's basically upside down. Front and rear are at seven o'clock, which means seven o'clock will be off to the passenger side. Okay. So yeah, when the box right side up, it would be the seven o'clock position for. So the three middle ones, two, three, and four, get put in with this hole off facing off the, basically off to this side, to this galley here. Because what that does, and you guys stop and think about this, as that oil comes down, hits the top of this camber and goes around, 
it's putting oil there and it's on this side of the you want it on this side of the rotation because that way it gets that oil film and it pulls it all the way around the bearing pulls it all the way around so it does that if you take and put this where that lines up with that hole at the bottom all your oil pressure is going by the cam bearing hole all the way down and that oil pressure's got two ways it can go and it's going to take the path of least resistance and it's going to sit and you've got your lifters your spring pressure uh, your timing chain everything pushing down on that camshaft think about it guys you got everything all the valve train, the rock arms, push rods, lifters, everything pushing down on the camshaft. And here you are expecting that you're going to have enough oil pressure to push back, to push up, to override all the valve train pressure that you have put on these cam bearings to get the oil to come up in there and make it all the way around and back down. Where this is put in at the, at this position here, it comes in and it's under pressure here it, it, it's in a smaller passage so its pressure is increased so it's oiling it gets down here it's got the groove going all the way around plus a hole going down and you got a bearing that's swipe uh, a, a crank that's swiping by there that oil hole twice to one revolution of the cam here so that's going to keep the oil pressure dropping and it's not really going to push the oil pressure up to your cam bearings. I have tested it on motors and every motor that I've lined up where it was down you could just look in oh I got it I could see the whole hole. Those cam bearings looked like hell. These came out of the dirt track motor and they are almost reusable. I am holding them on, on to them for a special build that we're going to do and that so but yeah that's why I clock my cam bearings I don't take the lazy man way out and line them up right now the oil's under pressure it's in a small confined area it's forcing the oil in there and it's making a continuous film down here the pressure is trying to decide do I go to the cam or do I go to the mains so that's just one thing there so that's my reasoning behind why I clock them the way I do and the dirt track motor was carrying 100 pounds of oil pressure so yeah yes I said 100 pounds so anyway so this is the main oil feed this hole right here you got to worry about because putting in this tap plug if you go too far in you will block off the oiling to your front cam bearing and your front main and your front rod. All that oil goes from here down to there plus feeds the one and two rod off the front here. Some of the oil comes from the second one it feeds basically feeds the rod number two this one feeds rod number one. So yeah you got a lot going on with your oiling system right here. But these two holes here, deadhead, and if for some reason you felt like and you had a tap that could do it, you could take that plug all the way within an eighth inch of coming into the lifter bore, you're fine. This one up here, you cannot do that. You've got to stay back. You can't sink the plug. Sometimes I have to tap it, put the plug in, and I, I cheat. I got an inspection cam, but if you have your cam bearing out and you look in there and if you start seeing your plug you know you're too deep so you what I've done there in the past I've marked the plug and I've got to take an angle grinder and beveled out the plug put it in make sure the bevels there so the oil can come up at that and flow down and get to your front main and uh, you want to use good taps and uh, it will find center and I don't use the lubricant on the cast iron stuff because cast iron in a way is a kind self-lubing self, uh, self -lubing, uh, metal 
with taps, so. And I've done this enough with this tap, I know roughly how far I gotta go. And I have done it too to where yep, that looks really good where I've left the plug out got it uh, set and that and then taken a grind and installed the cam gear this is all mock up you can't do it after you got the bearings in or you don't really want them in uh, maybe you have to take an angle grinder and grind down that plug a little so your chain up clear so do this and sometimes on some blocks and it's not every block some blocks there's a stop in there so you kind of kind of watch what you do with your tap uh, there was one block where I was forced to go ahead and use the stamp steel I was able to tap the middle one but this one and that one I had to use the stamp steel plug and then you just drive those in until they stop and then you stake some guys went as far as putting two of those plugs in then stake it so it can't come out but you just put one in there and stake it, it's going to be okay. So like this, this one here, you could run it all the way until you're down out of threads. Not necessary, but... And this is why you want to do this before you uh, assemble because you got all the metal shavings and everything going down. I really thought I had done it to this block, but it must have been the three other uh, 383 block that I did that because I went through doing all these with a another buddy one night and I guess this way the block got clean like I said I got a couple of spots back here because this block wasn't kept oiled up good when it was stored and I got some rust back there but oh all right that's the one Oops. I think I won't have to give me a Dremel when I got this off the end stand. Go in there with a small wire wheel and clean up because the cam bearing was in there, but water evidently got in there behind the cam bearing and the grooves got some rust in it. Well, you don't want that because that goes right straight to your crank and everything else. So, uh, I'm going to have to do a little extra wire wheeling around there. I've chased this deck plug hole. I've chased the three back here. I've done the one above the oil filter. I've also done these here. I'm going to put in what you call stand pipes. Don't even argue about it because I've ran them before and that camshaft I ran ran all its life with stand pipes and uh, it doesn't show any abnormal wear. So we're going to do it again. I'm, I'm duplicating my motor head back then. I know things have changed, but this is why I'm doing it. So yeah, I got to find my little Dremel set or a small wire brush that I can get down in there, a little narrow one, and groove this wire wheel around here and in there I can't change the bore size any. I mean I've used a wire out brush. And I got the lifter bore brush. I think it's in the toolbox there. And I got a bunch of stuff I don't want to move right now so uh, always make sure you run a bury the lifter bore bury brush down through the lifter bores. So you know they're free, clear, and not hung, hanging up. Uh, and like I said, that one can't even get the tip of my finger in. That's want to hog that out and clean up the flashing around this one, and get that to where the oil will run and go right down there, no problems. So this is going to be kind of a test of what I'm going to do building this 370 
7383, whatever you want to call it. So, I'm going to go ahead and release this video, but after this, they probably will be done up and then done. And once, uh, if, depending on how many I make in a week, that's how fast we'll have her done. In theory, my hoping is to have this motor running by this next week. Whether or not that happens, I'm not sure, but uh, that's what we're shooting for. But like I said, I got to get my chamfer uh, thing out so I can chamfer all these bolt holes here. Uh, it actually should have been done before decking, but uh, we'll get her. It's like this one's okay. I'll just we'll get her. That's all we can do. So I guess you guys didn't even see what I was looking at, but oh well. Ah. <laughs> uh, yeah, and I can see he didn't have to take much off this block. Almost could. Looks like a T. Uh, it's almost there. And uh, I think some magic marks have been put on the motor because there's some weird number here. And then there's a number up here, so which that's okay. If he, that's how he marks his machine work, that's fine. Um, nothing wrong with that. So, uh, let's see. I got a little bit more. I got, like I said, this very brush for the lifter boards wore out, so I just. There, now I got all the rust out of the all the rust out of the distributor bore. But yeah, I gotta get up here's okay, but the from the threads to the distributor bore is a little surface rust in there. Uh, I got some brushes I'll run through there, brush it good. So like I said, uh I'm going to burr brush every lifter bore and uh, get that brushed, wire brush the cam bearing area and here's where you clean guys there's stuff already falling in the, or the bore down here it, it's got a grit already in it so clean 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 Anyway, I hope that is something that you guys will like on this video series. Is uh, explain what I'm doing, doing it in an old school way. Yeah, like I said, there is plenty of new stuff and new ways of doing things, but um, sometimes they're not always good. Sometimes doing the old stuff ain't good, but. Uh, yeah. So I guess tomorrow we'll finish. Uh, I'll see if I. Well, I'll have Ian with me, so I don't know if we'll get much done to this or not. But my goal is to have this all cleaned up and the rust cleaned up from the backside here around there. Get the main bearings off. Make sure the oil galley plug down here under this is out. And tap that for a screw in plug. And, uh, okay, I got, this is what's left to do. Die grinder work here in this corner, this corner, the oil filter area, Ooh, that needs some work, the rear main cap, actually I'm going to check with the guy and see if he still does it where he takes the rear main cap, machines it off, and they put a plate so your oil pump is actually not mounted to the rear main uh, that was the problem with the 400 seemed like tightening the oil pump that's where they would break well you machine that off and put a block on that and that 
actually it was bolted to the mains but then your stud was pulling on that little half inch piece of metal and not the rear main cap and it seemed to work it seemed to work so I might check into that but I think it was it might be it might be worth it might cost more than what it'd be worth to do today and I don't know if that piece of metal is even made today anymore I know you could buy a dart block you could get a our, there's plenty of aftermarket 400 st style blocks out there but like I've said before the roller cams were around and the special race box were around this right here is what did it and I gotta order me a chamfer I just found out this cylinder's not chamfered or it was chamfered before and then decked after because that is sharp that'll destroy rings oh yeah this one is too that one yeah I gotta get one, one of the chamfer things from Sanders so I can chamfer those like they're supposed to be uh, yeah that's yeah I could hit it with some I don't know we'll figure that out but I'm starting to get tired and I'm kind of losing track of where I'm going to go with these videos, but uh, yeah, here you guys go. We're starting on the 377 after all these years. I uh, got the cam shaft all washed up and uh, got all that gunk off there and that cam looks like I just pulled it out of a running motor a couple of days ago. And it's been set, well... 93 to 97 that camshaft got four years of driving that was racing it at the racetrack driving it on the street and going for cruise around the county so it had four years of driving so it's set for 20 some years and I just washed it up and it looks just as good as damp on the doubt uh, that blacky stuff that's on there is barely wore off even after washing it and everything so that original cam is going to go in this motor and it's kind of like kind of like with this motor being so close to the wife's B day so it's really close it's almost like the motor we had when we first met has come back but it's going to have upgraded heads compared to what I had and it's going to have heads with accessory bolt holes this time uh, that was such a pain running without the accessory bolt holes and I'm doing an old iron just because I can now the 406 that's going to be old iron unless I can get my hands on some aftermarket heads which I doubt which I've got a nice set of heads sitting right there that will work good for that 406 so we'll see wow. kinda kinda feeling it so anyway y'all take care stay tuned for part two of this build and uh, like I said in the other video if you watched all the way to the end let me know if you want them released all as they go or do one a week and stretch it out or how do you guys want to see this build go together as if we stretch it out I know this will be running and stored by the time the, the last video is released so so yeah so we got a little, yeah, I'm done. I got, I got to go. See you guys later. Have a good one. And we'll get this thing running.